Hi everybody, this is Drayton Michaels, dog trainer and behavior technician from Urban Dogs. And this is the second video in the second session of doing counter conditioning for Bella the Yorkie Poo. And this is our uh, first greeting when she came into class on leash. And I noticed we're right back where we ended off at the first session. I'm able to do a reach and a hair tossle head pet and she's fine. So with that quick check in, after everybody shows up to class, we get started. And you can see Bella is incredibly anxious to get started following me around, so here we go. The upper left video is the overhead view, and the lower right video is the floor camera view. And uh, again, Bella is incredibly happy that we're going to start playing our reach and touch game, as you see her jumping for joy here. So as we get started, we're going to start with our uh, criteria we ended off on, which is a paw touch or a reach and a head pat. Remember, when you're counter conditioning, the most important thing is to keep the dog in the game. You want to make sure that they're uh, always voting with their feet and interested in the work you're doing. So we can see that we're uh, doing fine with the criteria we ended on from the first session, which is a reach and a touch to the head. Right there you saw me reach and put my hand over her left side and that is the first part of the picture of what it would be when we go to pick her up in this position. So I do a few and then on the third one she bails so I reposition and uh, help her just sort of reduce her stress from that last trial and we get started again. So she's not too comfortable she wants to take her time again with my reach so I'm gonna do a a quick reinforcer there with an extra treat thrown in. Keep her in the game. Let her let, let her know that my hand's okay. And I get over to a reach and I get my fingers underneath. And bear in mind, I'm not asking Bella to do any downs or stays or leave it. And if I need to reposition her, I'm just luring and prompting her to the new position. So with that overreach and uh, getting my hand underneath, I end that trial. That was a, a really good one. This uh, fast forwarded video here is the in between class. And uh, if you notice here, I'm gonna let somebody into the facility and Bella shadows me all the way over and waits for me to come in. So regardless of those few um, dust ups, so to speak, that she was uh, reluctant and decided to uh, retract from me, she's still really in the game. If you watch her right here, she's, she's ready to get started. Okay, so here's trial two. One of the things that I noticed when I was editing this video is that Bella really plays my right side. And I have watched this video a couple dozen times by this voiceover point. And I'm gonna be a lot more conscious of my right treat delivering hand in future trials with her. I'm getting a lot of what I consider false reads, meaning I'm getting pieces of the behavior I want at the next level, but my hand is sort of positioned on the gun, so to speak. I don't have the food right in her face, so I'm not uh, intentionally overshadowing her, but ultimately I'd like to get it a little bit more clean, meaning I'd, I'd like to have my right hand with no food in it, out in front, reach, get a piece of the behavior at the next level, then reach for the food. So that's something that uh, when I watch these videos, I'm, I'm very critical of my mechanics and how to make it more efficient uh, in the next session. And now I'm really going for the reach over from the left and get my hand around her side and fingers underneath. I'm a lot more uh, gentle with my touches here as you can see and she's, she's staying around and it's a very subtle difference. Um, I'm going to try to add some duration here in a second. You'll see me keeping my hand there. And again, this is what I'm talking about. My hand is behind my back and I'm getting the duration. Um, I know purists who might chide me for that. I know some people who might say, 
what's the big deal? You're you're getting the behavior, but I think it could be cleaner. And good. I'm actually able to get my hand over her back and actually touch under her stomach. Oh, that's good. Which is the whole big first part of I'm going to pick you up, right? right? At least from this angle. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I think once I get it accomplished, I can pick her up anyway. But you never know. They discriminate, so she might say, no, you can only pick me up the way you taught me. You might maybe, you know, but that's okay. So as we go back into this trial, I go right to my uh, new criteria, which is the reach and the touch slash hold. Um, and again, when you see me holding her there with my hand, there's absolutely no pressure. She's, as you saw in that last one, able to just jettison and get to where she needs to for safety. During the break, I work on some reaches from a standing position. Uh, reaches from a stand are a pretty big fear trigger for Bella, so I'm making this a secondary position from which I'm going to counter condition. And I do various intensities and different angles so that she gets used to this. And then we start trial three. And she's definitely ready to get started. She likes this game. And here comes Teddy. As we noticed in the last video, when I'm doing these sessions at play and train classes, we have to deal with other dogs that may come into the training area, which is fine. Teddy's an awesome dog, so we give him a little butt scratch and some love and let him do his thing. Um, Bella doesn't seem to mind, so we let him hang out for a bit. So I'm gonna reposition Bella and take a quick break here and get Teddy interested in some stuff on the other side of the room so we can keep our trials going. Teddy's still hanging around, so we're gonna wait till he decides to get on the other side of the room, but of course he comes back. Again, you really need to have some patience when you're working with multiple dogs and you're getting stuff on the fly uh, in a class, or perhaps if you're working with your friend's dogs or there's other dogs. You know, don't let that stress you out as long as the dogs are friends and they're not resource guarding the food. Um, just go with the flow. And so you see here, I'm getting some behavior that I like. I'm definitely getting a hand over the top, first part of a pickup, but I'm feeding as I'm doing it. So to be honest, it's a little sloppy. It's not as clean as I'd like, but I can clean that up. Once I get a really good response from Bella, um, I can just get that hold or that touch without the food in the pitcher. But you see the rate is real high. Okay. So if I were to pick her up, right, I'd have to have a little bit of duration as I went right underneath. She let me put my, her, my hand in. That's good. Yeah. So again, we're happy we got the behavior. It's a good sign. But 
uh, for you trainers out there, myself included, always look at these videos and look at this film with two of the animals that are learning and working. Yes, we're getting good dog behavior and Bella likes it, but I'm gonna definitely use this information on my mechanics to better the next session. So right out of the gate in this trial, we see that Bella is doing much better with that hand over her so back with the hold. On this trial, right? She's letting me, I went a little quicker that time, but she's basically letting me come underneath. And again, dogs vote with their feet, and when you're counter conditioning to touch or reach, allow the dog to move as they feel safe. If they want to go back, forward, side, allow them that option and you'll know if they're in the game because they'll keep coming back. And if they give up and they don't want to play the game, then take a break and reconfigure your approach. One of the things that I started to pick up on was that Bella will stand when I go to reach and she'll allow me to put my hand underneath her belly for a second or even a nanosecond and I'm paying for that. So as you see right here, I can get that little bit of duration with her in a standing position which in all actuality is part of the final behavior which is to pick her up. So I'm using the natural behavior she's offering even though she's offering out of apprehension as part of the final behavior. Bear in mind though, the dog will always be the deciding factor and they vote with their feet. Bella stays, she stands up and she allows my hand to be underneath her belly. So always work within the dog to empower the dog, not to overpower the dog as Bob Bailey would say. Bella's doing great. This trial was pretty much um, the same results as the past. We didn't make any great gains, so I decided to uh, fast forward the film. Um, but she did really good here. Uh, we got a few over the uh, back and underneath. And we lost power on the overhead, so now we're switching to flip video for the last two trials. The top left is the left side view. The bottom right is the right side view. This is trial number seven of the second session with Bella the Yorkie Poo, counter conditioning to my reach and touch with target behavior being to pick her up. In trial number seven, I did 11 reaches. Two were based on the beginning criteria of Bella allowing me to touch her paw. Two were based on the current highest criteria of being able to reach and hold her for one second, either on her left or right side, with a rate of reinforcement of one treat per second. The other seven reaches, Bella was over threshold and backed away or retreated or did some type of motion that did not allow me to make any contact with her, not even first level criteria paw touches. So the question is, is Bella getting worse or am I flooding her? The answer, no. She's simply choosing to retract and then come back. We see this quite a bit with puppies that are slightly apprehensive to play, but the play is so reinforcing that sooner or later they come out and join the other dogs. In this case, the food is reinforcing her enough so she stays in the game and stays close enough and does allow me to do some touches. This is a really, really important lesson. When you're working with fearful dogs, it's a good idea to pay for even below criteria if needed so that they stay under threshold more so overall throughout the session and they obtain a faster bounce back from fear-related stimuli or stress-related events. It's been almost 45 minutes since we've started and Bella is still in the game and this is a really great sign. Uh, there's a lot of stimulation in the room with other dogs. Um, I've been reaching and touching and holding and she's doing really great. So again, always make sure that you work within the dog's comfort level and they feel good about the training and things usually go well. So here we're going to see yet another piece of the final behavior which is underneath the belly with a slight lift. You see there, I don't go past any point where she might get upset and she allows me to do it, which is super. So 
we're well on our way to that final behavior of me being able to pick her up. Beautiful. 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 And here I'm about to get some really good pieces of the final behavior, which is arm over her back and a hold with a slight lift. I let her get out though. So that's our second session with Bella the Yorkie Poo, and we're doing really well in terms of uh, reaching our goal of being able to pick her up. I have video of our third session, and there's a fourth one planned. On the way out of the uh, session in the class that day, I did some more reaches from standing position, and this is the fast-forwarded video of that. Thanks again for watching, and make sure you stay tuned for the next sessions coming up with Bella the Yorkie Poo. This has been a K9 Sun Media presentation. Oh.